Jesus is the head, we are the body. Whatever makes Christ Christ is in us because we are the body of Christ. If somebody sees my body carrying the head, he will say, this person is called body glorious. And so when we believed in Christ, we who are the body of Christ, Jesus addresses us as himself. So it makes <laughs> it makes the believer Christ. Glory be to Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Here we are again for yet a new episode of the Marvelous Believers Show. It is always a new episode. We will never get used to this. There is no time yeah. that we have met here and not learned something. Yeah. There is no time that we have gathered here in vain. Yeah. And I'm so super excited about even today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for finding time to always be with us. Yeah. This fellowship has made us, has continued to transform our lives. And we are so grateful for you and for us and for the platform that we have at Wema TV yeah. to be able to share the word of God, to be able to continue discussing and learning yeah. who we are in Christ, how marvelous we have become. Let me tell you, the more we declare this marvelous believer thing, the more marvelous we are becoming day by day. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory yes. be to oh, Jesus. Yeah. And I, am, I, I know last week we had... Maybe some of us were with us, and in case you missed, I promise you, go back and check it out. But it was awesome. We had our minister, Bonnie Glorious, in the studio, and the things he taught, I, I, I am overwhelmed. It is so much knowledge, so much understanding of the new life reality. And I am so excited that we are continuing or he is here with us again. I don't know the direction, Minister Bonnie Glorious, you are yeah. taking us today. <laughs> but whichever direction, I know there is something special that we are about to learn. Yeah. So it is such a honor to have you. Mm. Uh, and, and we really do appreciate that okay. you find time to come again and again. Yeah. And it will not end yeah. even now. Yeah. So uh, I'm Pastor Lucy Lepore. Let yeah. me just allow our minister for the day to take over. Awesome. Praise the Lord, marvelous believer. How are you? Good evening, good morning, good afternoon from wherever you're watching us from. And at what time you're watching us in, we are here again for the word of God. And it's always amazing. Yeah, every time we meet together with the brethren, it's always a way big. It's always bigger and bigger and bigger. And it is growing bigger every day. Hallelujah. And that is what we are singing here at Marvelous Believer, that we are getting bigger every day. <laughs> we are getting bigger every day. And every time we meet, I believe and I know it will be always be a higher glory. And today, you can't miss today's show. Praise the Lord. And again, I can also ask you to keep on sharing, sharing, sharing that link and inviting people because every time you share, you are sharing with us here. You are teaching with us and we are so grateful. And so we thank God. The last time we were here, we concentrated on, on the, the arrival of the Son of God who was the firstborn and we concentrated on him and we linked it a little bit on what and how he linked us into the new life which we have in him or into that sonship, praise the Lord. And so today we take it from there and I believe that the Lord is going to open us so much, it's going to open our eyes that we may understand and allow me to pray before we begin, praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord, because of your life inside of us. We are so grateful. This really means a lot to us. Thank you, Lord, because everything is responding to us according to who we are in you. And every place, Everywhere this word is going, it is going to bring more light in Jesus' name. You say that the time that you sent your word into Israel, you brought light in Israel. And so it's happening in this place in Jesus' name. And the world has been turned into what God wants it to be in the name of Jesus. And the believer, you who is listening, we thank God because the eyes of your understanding, they are flooded with the light that you know what is the hope of your calling, that we may really understand what the Lord has brought us to be and what he has qualified us to be because that is the only way we grow into him. In the name of Jesus, we pray and give thanks. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. And so today the Lord is sharing a very interesting part and portion that is our Lord inside the, the place where he has called us into. Hallelujah. And sonship, when we saw that Jesus 
became the firstborn of God in this world, or rather, when the angel appeared to Mary, he told him that that child, he said, the King James uses a funny word, he says, that holy thing, <laughs> that holy thing shall be called the Son of God. And so, we see that Jesus, when he arrived, he is the Son of God, praise the Lord, and he fulfills very many prophecies. In the Old Testament, he fulfills an, a prophecy by Isaiah where Isaiah says, Unto us a child is born and a son is given. He shall be called the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and all those names. But he says something that is so notable. He says a child is born and a son is given. So there is a difference between a child that is born and a son that is given because sonship is weightier than, the, than your English dictionary definition. <laughs> Sonship is very heavy. When we come to one of the old languages, that is the Greek, sonship means a nature after a certain kind. Praise the Lord. When we, say, when we speak about a son of John, that means that that son has got the DNA of John, has got the nature of John. He has got everything that is almost alike with John. Praise the Lord. So it means a nature after a certain kind. Hallelujah. And the difference between John and that child or that son, maybe it can be experience. Praise the Lord. Or time or age. But when it comes to the nature, there is no change in nature. There is no difference in nature. Uh, when we come... We've never come across an old person and we said or we gave a comment, and this may sound funny, Pastor Lucy, mm -hmm. we, have, we, we don't have somebody who is more human than the other. <laughs> uh, we don't have, uh, when we come to the, uh, there's something we call comparative and superlatives. There is no one who is more human than the other. I think this is human, human, and humanist. So there is, <laughs> there is no one who is more human than the other. So that means, when it comes to the nature of a being, the nature is consistent, consistently consistent, and it is the same. Praise the Lord. The difference between a higher nature and a lower nature is the same. As in, I mean, there is no difference. Praise the Lord. And so when we checked at sonship, sonship can be defined in this manner according to our subject matter. Sonship is the nature of God coming inside the human body. Because when Jesus was called the Son of God, it is when God in his infinity entered the human body and he came into this world so as to save his own people. Praise the Lord. Because the setting of the nature that man had, there was no other way of saving him. Save the nature of save God coming into his into this nature and saving this man. Praise the Lord. And so today we pick it up from there and we will take it from the book of John, chapter 1, from verse 8. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He says in the book of John, chapter 1, verse 8, he was not that light. He's speaking about John the Baptist, who came to bear witness of the light. So he says, he was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light who lights every man that comes into the world? He says, verse 10, He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not, praise the Lord. So he's speaking about God, who in his fullness, he came into a body, he entered into the human nature. He came as a man, praise the Lord. And so he was in the world, and the world was made by him. So him whom the world was made by came into the world and the world knew him not. Praise the Lord. And he says, verse 11, he came unto his own and his own received him not. But verse 13 puts us into the equation. He says, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on God. His name, praise the Lord. When Jesus was born, the angel said, or the messenger, the angel is a messenger. The word angel means messenger. So when the angel came, he gave a message to Mary. He told Mary, 
what is happening is that God is bringing a certain genealogy in this world. God is bringing a certain nature in this world. He's bringing a son of God so as to establish many sons of God. Praise the Lord. And here he says that as many as believed him, to them gave he the power, that is, they received the ability to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Praise the Lord. So if you believe in Jesus Christ, can I tell you something? Can I break the news for you? The news is that you are a son of God. When you believed in Jesus, you became one nature with Christ. The nature of Christ and our nature, we who are in Christ Jesus, the nature is the same. Praise the Lord. If Jesus can be accused of a mistake that he made, we, because we are in his lineage, we are liable of the same mistake. Praise the Lord. Like Adam did, and he landed us into a mess. He made us to enter into a certain mess that we will never forget. But even in that, or even so, even with that, we partook of 100% the nature of Adam. We have been born, and we were born under the bondage of that sin. Praise the Lord. But now, thanks be to God for Jesus. He came to bring us out of that mess. Praise the Lord. So what Adam entered us into, Jesus came and rescued us from the same, same thing. Praise the Lord. So Jesus, when he's looking at us, he doesn't address us with a different nature from his. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Jesus will never address you who is a believer with a, a difference in nature. When he looks at you, when he looks at himself, he sees the ability in him. He can see the same ability inside of you. Praise the Lord. So he says, to them that received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. He qualified us to become the sons of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then again, allow us to rush to the book of Romans, chapter number 8. In the same line, with the nature that we have received, that which is in Christ Jesus. So when Jesus is addressing the believers through brother Paul in the book of Romans chapter 8 from verse 9, remember we are speaking about the sons of God and we have defined the sons of God and we have defined the nature of the sons of God. So now he gives us the, the go ahead of the sons of God. He says, Romans chapter 8 from verse 9, but you are not in the flesh. So he that is in Christ is not in the flesh, he says, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you, you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. And when we believed in Jesus, the Holy Spirit came inside of us and now he dwells in us. And because he is inside of us, you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. So your nature and the nature of Christ, they are all one. Praise the Lord. Maybe physically, we cannot see Jesus in the body today. But because the believer has the nature of Christ, we have Jesus in the body. Praise the Lord. And when Jesus is making any address in this world, he is making it with the reverence of his body which is the believer. The believers are the body of Christ. Like, we have Bonny Gloria's body here. The head of Bonny Gloria's is not the one called Bonnie, and then the body called Glorious. So the head and the body don't have a distinctive nature, praise the Lord, or they are not different, but they are all one. Okay. I bet that is very simple. When you look at me, every time I'm walking and somebody sees my face, you will say, that is body glorious. <laughs> if somebody sees my body carrying the head, he will say, this person is called body glorious. And so when we believed in Christ, we who are the body of Christ, Jesus addresses us as himself because we are the body of Christ. Jesus is the head, we are the body. Whatever makes Christ Christ is in us. So it makes, <laughs> it makes the believer Christ. <laughs> okay, L let me read. Maybe by reading it, it will give us a clarity on the same. Praise the Lord. So let us skip to verse number 14. He says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, 
They are the sons of God. We are reading Romans chapter 8, verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So Jesus no longer has that title in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. He was the only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Again, it's good to underline that the word son of God goes beyond the, the title of Jesus in the Trinity. It also takes us into the equation because as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Praise the Lord. And so he says, for they, for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry Abba Father. This means when we believed in Christ, what came into us it is what qualifies people to be the sons of God. And the qualification you have received is not the qualification to make you a slave to bondage, to fear again, or to fear the Father. Now, when it comes to us relating with God, we don't fear the Father. Long time ago, people used to fear, even the high priest, who was the closest person to God, okay? <laughs> According to the law that was working at that point, the high priest was the closest person to God. But even him, for him to come and offer something to God, he used to be afraid because he did not have the title of, he did not have the relationship of a father and a son. They only used to relate with God on matters of sin. <laughs> and today we have many high priests <laughs> who only relate with God only, with, only in the confines of sin. Praise the Lord. Th those are the guys who God, when God calls them to the highest realm, he would only call them to the place of come let us reason together for as though your sin is, is dirty, I will make it as white as <laughs> snow. Praise the Lord. But right now, it has been shifted. So the high priest used to be tied on his leg and he would have some sort of bells that would make noise around his around his chest, praise the Lord. And the, all of those things, it, it was called the effort and the effort had some things that used to, to make noise like the bell. So that was to make sure that the person has not messed up inside that place, okay? Because he used to enter into a certain place which was called the Holy of Holies. We will tackle that maybe another day. It's a long, it's a very long subject. But as he entered, they, they will chain him on uh, at his leg so that when he goes inside there, and then he blunders because of fear, and then he, he dies, he will be pulled through that chain, praise the Lord. So that is how they used to relate with God. And until we understand the fear that used to be imposed on them, even the closest person who was very close to God, he used to fear so, so much, praise the Lord. But now, when Jesus comes, he has changed the narrative. God establishes a new covenant. And in this covenant, he brings the Holy Spirit in us. And the Holy Spirit in us, he is the boldness we have even when we are relating with the Father. And when we are relating with the Father, we are not afraid. They used to call him Yahweh. So he was a God. Praise the Lord. He was God who was far from man. They did not relate with man. But now, well, let's see what literally it meant. Because now after all that place in fear, where the high priest was so afraid even to minister to God, that showed that every time he came to fellowship with God, there is something that was driving him and there was no confidence between him and God. Okay, So now, uh, when we have received Christ, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God, and we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. At that time, it was a spirit of bondage. Before, before now you minister to the Lord, it was an expression of bondage because fear brings so much torment, okay? And there is no fear in perfect love. We are in Christ as brothers. And do you know what perfect love has done? It has made us. He says, here is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and he gave himself for us, praise the Lord. And then, in all that, he has done that, that we may have boldness now, <laughs> praise the Lord. Now he has given us boldness. We have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, 
But the spirit of adoption, where we cry, Abba, Father, the crying there is not like where we cry to God to answer our prayers, like <laughs> with gnashing of teeth. No, it is a it is a cry which is blissful, where you cry to your father. You see the relationship between a father and a, and a son, that relationship. Now we can we can relate with him and we can speak to him because the spirit of God himself, in fact, that relationship makes us to love God even more because it is now him in us agreeing with him who is in all eternity. And now when these two agree, they are bearing witness. He says to your spirit, you have now been made one with the father. You have been qualified. He has made you a partaker of the inheritance, not by your own deeds because the law used to to bring you back to what you can do to please God. But now it teaches you that he has qualified you by his own deeds. He has qualified you by Christ. And right now, you are his son. Praise the Lord. And verse 17, he says, And if children, then heirs. And kindly. Look at that verse closely. He says, And if children, then heirs. So if you have been made children of God, you know sons of God, you know how Christ became the Son of God? The Spirit of God filled Mary and she conceived and Jesus came. The Son was given. So now, when, when we believed in Jesus, this is what happened. We were made children. And if children, he says heirs. He does not say heirs of the things of God. <laughs> he does not say heirs of the things which God gives. But he says heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. So what we have inherited is God himself. <laughs> what we have inherited inside of us, we have inherited God himself. And so the believer, every other thing in this life will not see you as just you, who your parents named you as, but they will see you with the identity which God has named you with. When he said that in my name you will cast out demons, he did not say you will use my name. No, he said when you go there, when those things look at you, they will see me. That name means my ability. Name means power. Okay? Name means power. Because the name of Jesus cannot be evident without understanding who Christ is. Wherefore God has given him a name which is above every other name. The aboveness of other name does not mean the name, the literal name, J-E-S-U-S-C-H-R-I-S-T. It goes beyond that. It is what he has obtained in himself, what he has received at his death, burial, and resurrection. He received a name. He received power that is above every other power in heaven and on earth. And that's why when he rose again, he came to the disciples and said to them, all power and authority has been given to me. Go ye therefore. Now he is telling them, now the name is not only on me, but now because you believe in me, the name is on you. So you go ye therefore <laughs> in that name. Then he continues and says that, and Lord, I am with you always till the end of times. Praise the Lord. I will end it with a, with a little story which is found in the book of Acts. When Paul was persecuting the church, when Paul was persecuting the body of Christ, and then that thing really touched the heart of the Lord himself. And now one day, when Paul is headed to Damascus to do what he's used to, Jesus appeared to him. Paul testifies and says that he saw a brighter light than the light of midday. Midday is the brightest light, but he saw a brighter one than that light of the midday. And that light overshadowed him. And that light, when it overshadowed him, Jesus began to minister to Paul. He asked Paul, why do you persecute me? Yet Paul was persecuting the church. So the oneness between the church and Christ is so intimate to a point that when you persecute the church, Jesus that takes it personal. <laughs> you are not persecuting the church. You are persecuting me. And so Paul sees from persecuting me. And from today, you, you, are going to you are going to minister the light of the gospel. And from that time, Paul began to teach the light. He began to minister the light. And today, the light of sonship is that we have received Jesus. We have, a, we have received the Father. We have inherited God inside of you. Today, if I took a scalpel, literally, and slaughtered you. 
inside your spirit, I will not find you. I will find God himself. So that nature of God dwells in us wholly. He says that he pleased God that all the fullness of the Godhead should dwell in Christ bodily. Then he says, and you are complete in Christ. That is Colossians 2 from verse 7. He says, now you, you are complete in Christ. The completeness which you have received is the one which is in Jesus. So when you believed in him as Lord and Savior, he, you received that spirit of sonship. You inherited God himself. You became a joint heir together with Christ. And from today, in the name of Jesus, from today as you walk, you will not see things as you can see them in your own eyes, but you will see them with the eyes of Christ. When you look at yourself at the mirror, <laughs> you know the Bible is called the mirror. When you look at yourself in the mirror, you don't see any other person. You see you, but you don't see yourself as a victim. When you read the story of Jesus, so God anointed Jesus of Nazareth that he went around healing the sick. He went around doing good and healing them that were oppressed of the devil. You don't see yourself in the oppression. You see yourself in the oneness with Christ Jesus. You are in that story with Jesus because the nature which was in him has now been brought to you. And now when you receive Jesus, he said, after you believe in me, me, and after you receive me, more and greater works will you do than which I have done. He said, you will not pray and I will heal the sick for you. He says, you will heal the sick. You will raise the dead. You will cleanse the lepers. Because what we received is as Jesus had. And today, if you, if you, you are feeling sick and then you ask God to heal you, he will not answer the prayer because he answered it many years ago. So what you do, you stand your place. He says, there, stand it there for your position in Christ. Receive, take, put on the whole armor of God because it is not you. It is of God. Everything that you have received is of God. And now you just put on. You put it on. To put it on means it's there in the it is there in that place and I will just go take it and pull it on and walk according to what I am. When I wanted to, to put on this shirt, I went, picked it and put on that shirt. Praise the Lord. And so you put on the life of God. You put on the nature which is in Christ. And when you do so, every other thing will respond to you according to what you have put on. Praise the Lord. Yes, and we ended at that. Wow. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Wow. I, I don't know about you, uh, marvelous believer, as you've listened, I don't know what to tell you again, but it blows my mind when he says when you persecuted the church, Jesus be, takes it personal. You know, we like telling people, don't, don't be personal, don't take it personal. <laughs> Jesus takes it. You touch the anointed, he gets personal. That is who we are. That is why we are marvelous. That is why he started by saying, you can, there is no better nature. There is no, bet, there is no nature, nature, nature rest. Yeah. There is nothing different. Yeah. Nature is consistently the same. Yeah. We received the nature of God. Yeah. There is no better nature. There is no other version. Yeah. You are the best that God could ever make. Yeah. I, I like something I read from a pastor had written that the day he, re, he, he read a book by T.L. Osborne and it was written, you are God's best and he says wow. there are not enough devils to ever change my mind from wow. that. Wow. It doesn't matter how many demons. My, it, they are not enough to ever make me think differently. Mm -hmm. We are the best. There is no other nature that God will ever give to anyone else except what we have received. And that's why Jesus gave up his position, like he said, of being the only begotten son. And he decided, let me be the firstborn from the dead. All of us became sons. Mm -hmm of God. Hallelujah. We are so blessed. We are so blessed because we, me and you, I know the spirit bears as witness. He cries, Abba, Father. We have that relationship. And that's why we are marvelous. That's why we have the very nature of God. That is why we, we know the comfort of being a son of God. Hallelujah. I know you are blessed. And uh, once again, thank you so much, uh, Minister Bonnie Glorious, for allowing God to to use you to speak to us and to bless us with the revelation of the word. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for tuning in. This is the Marvelous Believer Show. We will meet again next week. Always keep praying for us, support us, uh, keep the fellowship hot and share the link so that we become a blessing to very many. God bless you. Thank you so much.